Hey, what's up? Lightbolt Joe here. Today we're going to discuss the 1999 cult classic film Dogma. So you can only get this on either DVD or Blu-ray. That's it. You can't stream it. You can't buy it digitally. Harvey Weinstein owns the distribution rights to this. And he has refused... He's a disgusting human being. He's refused to... He's a disgusting human being for various reasons. But semantics aside, he has refused to sell... Kevin Smith back the rights and so it's in limbo for who knows how much longer so you can only watch this film whether you have a DVD or you have the Blu-ray DVD came out in 2000 Blu-ray came out in 08 and that's it that's all we got so if you're lucky enough to get a copy of this somehow watch it it is over two hours long came out in 99 the fact that so Kevin Smith wrote and directed this and um he wrote and directed this before Clerks, and he didn't want to make this yet because he wanted to like hone himself as a filmmaker, and he wanted to like better mend himself in regards to you know getting the hang of things, if you will. And he knew that this would have to have a lot of CGI in it as well because it's it's, it's angels and demons and humans. It's a story of stuff. So at the end of Clerks, which is the first film that he did. Um, in this view askew universe that we have, it says at the end, Jalen Son and Bob will return in Dogma. And then we had after Clerks, and I gotta go through my list now. We had Mallrats, so Clerks was 94, Mallrats was 95, love Mallrats. We then had um, Drawing Flies in 96, we had Chasing Amy in 97, right? Chasing Amy was 97, love Chasing Amy. Oh, gorgeous. And then we don't think, I don't think there was anything in 98. And then now we have Dogma in 99. So it's been, it was a five-year difference between Clerks and and Dogma. And th the fact that you have so many people in this. Alan Rickman plays uh, Angel uh, Metatron. You have Selma Hayek playing Muse. You have Jason Lee playing a demon, Ezekiel, who technically, biblically speaking, how the myth goes, Ezekiel is the god of the dead. And uh, then you have Loki being the Norse god, trickster god. But in this film... The characters are kind of switched. You have Loki being the god of death, played by Matt Damon, and then you have uh, Jason Lee playing an ex-god of trickster, Ezekiel, who is now banished to hell, but then he's back as a demon. But then you also have Ben Affleck as Bartleby, another angel. You have uh, Chris Rock playing Apostle. It, it's just, it's so well-balanced in regards to the talent of this. One of my favorite moments... There's a lot of favorite moments in this, but one of my favorite moments is just from one of the things I said past where I love watching actors do projects together, like more than one project together. So like that's what's what I love about the View Askew universe is that Kevin hires the same people to do the same stuff. Not all the people, but he mixes in some characters, right? So Jason Lee, uh, Ben Affleck, Jason Mewes, obviously, as Jay, and then himself as Silent Bob. We've seen them all in prior things. But then you also had the guy who plays Randall in the, this as well. The guy who played in, in uh, Clerks in this as well. You have the guy who plays um, Dante in this as well. So, like, the actors are playing different characters, but it's the same universe. And Jay's telling a story about tying Bob up to the ceiling of a mall and crushes his head through a, a wall. And that's referencing mall rats. So, like, it's all one connected universe. It's wonderful. But... Adam Sandler does the same thing. His Happy Madison production, and I've said this numerous times, does the same thing. Adam hires, or his team hires, the same actors and actresses to play different characters in his world, and they're all friends. So you have Chris Rock and Selma Hayek doing some scenes together, but then at one point, the two of them are talking to each other at a table, sitting next to each other, someone's doing other stuff, they're both just like, like looking at each other, and I'm like, ha! Ah, because I'm getting flashbacks then to Grown Ups, which happens much after this. Flashbacks in regards to timeline of when I've seen certain things. So Grown Ups came out in 2010. They were in the movie together. Grown Ups 2 came out in 2013. They were in that movie together as well. So it's just awesome to see... It, to me, it's awesome to see actors and actresses who work so well together do projects again and again and again together. So this is the third film, to my knowledge, that I've seen of both Selma Hayek and Chris Rock doing something together. It's just so cool. So I first saw Dogma when I was a kid. This came out in 99. I was nine years old. I'm pretty sure I probably saw it right after 
like when the like the DVD was released. I didn't see it in theaters, so I had to have seen it at like 10, 11, 12, something like that in that age range. And like when I was that when I when it was that millennial time, because I was nine in ninety nine, I was ten in two thousand, I was eleven in two thousand one. So I was. See, when you're born on a year that ends in a zero, it's very easy to keep track of your age. But it's also poignant in remembering the turn of the century and stuff. So I was double digits when I saw this for the first time. And I only saw it once. So it was my family. Laughed. It was very bloody. It's a good, it has a lot of good horror elements to this, too. And I didn't understand it as a kid. I just thought it was a funny, you know, horror religious film and God's a woman at the end. And I was like, ha-ha, neat it's different so the fact that a lot a lot of s'mores that plays uh plays god in, at the end of this is just so cool and the premise of this is that bartleby and loki matt damon and uh ben affleck's characters well ben affleck and matt damon's characters respectively ben affleck plays bartleby matt damon plays loki they're cast out angels who are trying to get their way back to heaven and the way to do this is to go through a newly christened arch in a at a church in New Jersey, so the quest is to go back to Jersey, to then wash away the sins so that way they can then turn mortal and then be killed and then immediately go to heaven with clean, fresh slate kind of a thing. But then if they do that, then all hell breaks loose, literally, and the world, everything blinks out of existence. That's the lore. That's the dogma of it. So continuing on with the dogma of Christianity, continuing on with the dogma of religion in general, it was so well put together. It was so well explained. It was so well... How do these angels interact with these humans? How do these angels and demons interact with these humans in, in the real world? And then how is Jay and Silent Bob prophets in all of this as well? Why are we starting out in Wisconsin? Then we're in Illinois. And then we're back in Jersey. And why are Jay and Silent Bob in Illinois? Why are they meeting this character of Bethany in Illinois? Who's Bethany's the last scion through the course of all this. It's her task to do this because she's the great times 16 niece of Jesus kind of a thing. So Jay and Silent Bob are in Illinois because they're trying to find Shermer, Illinois because of all the John Hughes movies that they're fans of and they're trying to pick up girls and all these stuff. We, we go heavily deep into... Uh, we go heavily, not so, so deep. We go heavily and touching the surface. There we go. Of um, Jay's bisexuality in this, which is interesting because it's a lot of repression um, but acknowledgement at the same time, very neat. And I didn't obviously pick up on that as a kid. Here I am talking about film to film and how I appreciate the queerness and the celebration of life and pro-choice aspect of throughout all of this of Jay and Silent Bob. This film was very pro-choice as well, but that it was always a celebration of the queer community, especially in regards to Chasing Amy as well about it's okay to question. You don't have to be one thing. You can question to be something else if you want to. As long as you're safe, happy, and healthy, that's all that matters. And Kevin writes that throughout all of his projects. And then to have Jay acknowledge hooking up with guys at various points, it's it's something I didn't pick up on when I was a kid. And here I am talking about picking up on those little clues throughout these other films. And Kevin, you know, this very preaching of tolerance and acceptance and community just in general and to see it in the films individually and then see and then have these dialogue moments in the actual film that came out in 99 of jake talking about hooking up with guys i'm like bro i missed it as a kid i didn't pick it up because it, I, it wasn't a thing i was acknowledged with does that make sense it wasn't a thing i was not accustomed to it wasn't a thing i had acknowledgement of didn't know that people can be different if that makes sense didn't know so it's nice seeing this. It's nice seeing this as an adult and appreciating it for what it is because it's absolutely incredible. It talks about life. It talks about death. It talks about all different ways of life. It talks about gender. It talks about sexuality. It talks about so many things which make an incredible, well-rounded Kevin Smith project. Kevin is an amazing poet, absolutely amazing poet, absolutely hysterical in the comedy aspects but an absolute genius in the drama aspects. We have all those beautiful speeches in Chasing Amy, the film we just watched prior to this, the 97 film. And then you have all the beautiful speeches, especially from Alan Rickman in this project. And I had to read so much trivia on this as well. Alan, I think, had two questions after reading the script, uh, deciding if he was going to be uh, Metatron in this project. 
to Kevin Smith asking, one, how faithful you are going to be to the script, and two, um, what was two? I think two was something about the wings or like the prosthetics or something like that. First thing I definitely remember being about the about the script. I don't remember what the second thing is that I read, but and then it's another lost talent. That's the interesting thing of death, right? You only get two guarantees in life. You're born and you die. What happens in between? Well, that's the interesting aspect of life, if you will. What happens next? There's no guarantee of what happens next. There's only a finite you were born and then you will die. But what happens in between? Well, that's the adventure, right? That's the adventure. We will definitely be missing Alan Ruckman. Um, he did... I think he did Galaxy Quest right before this, if I'm not mistaken. I'd have to look that up, but I'm pretty sure he did Galaxy Quest right before this. The other thing was, this was supposed to come out in 98, but there was so much pushback from the Catholic Church um, about this project. And then it was pushed to November of 99. I think that's how that went. So this might have been filmed in 97, for all I know. Maybe that's why there was a gap between Chasing Amy and Dogma, that there was no Kevin Smith property that came out in 98. Because this was supposed to come out in 98. And I think Jay and Silent Bob, the film, comes out and came out in 2001. But then you have the Clerks TV show. And then you have... I think the Clerks TV show is 2000. Jay and Silent Bob is 2001. I don't know when Clerks 2 came out. But I'm pretty sure the Jay and Silent Bob do Degrassi miniseries of Degrassi. Um, that came out in 05, I believe. Those discs are in the mail. I currently purchased them. They are in the mail. I should have done this a while ago. Things happen. We didn't get to it. Oh, well. We'll watch them when, when they come in. But we're continuing on with our marathon. I'm just pretty amazed with the overall Jay and Silent Bob marathon, the overall View Askew marathon that we've been doing. Because I didn't realize how warm and welcoming everything is. Despite the fact that there's constant, you know, slurs and stuff. It's not pitched as derogatory. It's not pitched as offensive. It's just people are speaking, reflecting of the time. And you have this we not me underlined message throughout the, all the films and it's neat i i appreciate that it's like a warm blanket being draped over you a nice little hug kind of thing as you're watching the next projects that i'm noticing so i'm very curious how the next projects are because i've seen them minus clerks three i haven't seen clerks three the one that came out two years ago in 22 i didn't see that one yet but um I think it's, it's, you know, when like, how do I explain this? How do I explain this? You know, when like a part of you knows like something's missing and then like you think like, you know what it's supposed to be. And then it's, it's like. An aha moment of like, oh, okay, that's that's what it is. That's what that thing was that I was trying to fill the gap. I feel like this marathon is is doing that in a sense of there's always a balance. There's always a duality. Life and death, right? Light and dark. And what I've appreciated about this and realizing in regards to my own dualities of life is that there has to be a balance of something. So the balance of these projects is, yes, they say words that we don't say anymore, but it's a reflection of the time. Yes, they might say something that might hurt someone's feelings in the present moment in a retort kind of thing, but they're doing it for some kind of reason to get to the next scene, the next adventure, because these films then get adventurous as we continue on from what I remember. It's a duality. It's a it's a it's a poetry meets comedy kind of a thing. It's not so much dark comedy, even though there's a lot of massacre stuff in this. So technically, we're gonna label this as a horror film, but 
there's a lot of duality in how Kevin writes, and I'm seeing that now. I'm seeing that. I'm appreciating the duality of it. The harshness and the lightness. The uplift. Yeah, the harsh and the uplift. The harsh and the up. I like it. Like it. Love it. Dogma. 99 cult classic shown. On to the next review. Mahalo.